Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to a special survival show. Brand new, every start of the month I'm going to give you the lowdown on everything you need to know about survival games coming in the next few months. Now I've done this in the past where I covered just one month, but we're going to be taking a look all the way up until June. April is pretty light, May is absolutely jam-packed, with only actually one confirmed release in June so far. Release dates, prices, that's the kind of info you're going to get in this video. You can check out the comments to see the list of games featured, and there will be a little bit more than just survival. There are some games that I think have got a little bit of crossover, or I'm just flatly interested in, and you're going to see on the channel, like this one, Robin Hood, Outlaws and Legends. But the main focus is survival, especially games that possibly may end up being delayed again. You know the usual suspects. As ever, I'll always keep you up to date with individual videos on some of this stuff if anything changes. But for now, this is the confirmed release dates. And I've got a big mix between brand new releases on PC, as well as the Xbox and PlayStation ports, as well as DLC releases. So it's all here. I'm not guaranteeing that all of these games are great, or I think personally they're amazing, but I know they're really hyped, and so I definitely want to deliver the information for you at least. So do go ahead and leave a like, make sure you comment in about what game you want to see or play the most out of today's video list. Come join a Discord where I've got links to most of these games in their own separate channels so you can always keep up to date with all the latest news on all your favourite survival games. And let's go through Survival for Spring 2021. Breath Edge is being coined the Subnautica but set in space. It is a comedy survival game where you are tasked with staying alive as you try and get more oxygen to explore the wreckage and ruins of a huge space liner and solve some mysteries. It has been in early access on PC a number of years and now it's finally coming to Xbox, PlayStation and Nintendo Switch as fully complete. The version 1.0 launched on PC a month or so ago and now it is time for console fans to get a try of this comedy field space sim. It is going to be available on the 6th of April. It's going to be $25 but if you're really quick right now you may be able to get it for $20 with a 20% pre-order time limit. Mostly positive reviews on Steam, it spent a number of years but received consistent updates and have got more plans with free extra story content as well as hopefully some new game modes in the future. So I think this is worth definitely a shot, particularly on an Xbox or Playstation. As ever though, with survival games on Switch, definitely check out some gameplay before you purchase it. And it just so happens I've already done a few Let's Plays and I've got a tips guide incoming the day that it launches on the 6th of April. A decent little game, like I said, if you like Subnautica, you like lots of chicken gags, then you are going to love Breath Edge, a great single player survival experience. So hopefully completing a somewhat lighter April month is Pray for the Gods. Now this game has been in development for a number of years, it's been on Steam early access for at least a year and a bit, and it's finally coming to Xbox and PlayStation. I am actually pretty impressed with this one. It is a mashup of Shadow of the Colossus mixed in with a little bit of Breath of the Wild and chucking some proper survival mechanics as you survive against the harsh cold, taking on huge giant monsters as well as some smaller mob-like creatures. It is a single player game, it is completely open world, you can choose to take on whatever sized massive boss in any way or shape or form you want and you've got a bunch of upgrades and unlocks you can get to help traverse the environment. Right now on Steam, the game is $29.99. I fully expect that to be around $40 when it comes to console, maybe even more. At the moment, I can't find a pre-order page on the PSN or the Xbox. That's because it has been delayed a couple times in terms of where they thought it was going to release. They originally said quarter one 2021, and that was in a post from a few months back, but only just last week they announced that it wouldn't actually be coming in quarter one. It would just be a tiny bit later. They are now saying the end of April and since that's literally only a few weeks away I think that's a probably a good date so yeah expect to see this appear at the end of this month and if it changes obviously I'll let you guys know but yeah I'm hoping it really does appear on the consoles then it does look like the extra time they spent in early access was worth it though as the ports are now native for the PlayStation 5 as well as the Xbox series consoles I do believe you can expect 60 FPS and a bunch of other extras and additions for the PlayStation 5 edition and of course it's still going to run nicely on a old gen console but at 30 FPS. Crafting, survival mechanics, I've played this a bunch of times a good while ago and definitely want to dip back in and see how it performs on the next consoles. Pray for the gods at some point at the end of April. 
So back in November 2020, I took pretty much a survival vacation as I spent nearly a month playing and covering nothing almost but Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Really enjoyed it, really loved it. I felt it had great similarities, as a lot of survival games do with RPG and open world, and I felt it fitted in. Got loads of views on some of them videos, so it was definitely successful. I am very much looking forward to the next batch of DLC that's coming out. Wrath of the Druids is going to take Ivor to Ireland and exploring a brand new playable area as you pretty much go and do all the usual Assassin's Creed things you've already probably done in England, but now we're going to be doing it with a bit more of a Celtic vibe. Now there's not that much information detailing everything you're going to be doing and there isn't even a trailer yet, but it is going to be coming out on April the 29th. So I might just be able to squeeze in some of this before all the other big survival big guns hit in May. So yeah, very much looking forward to this one. I still haven't completed the first game, that's why I stopped doing content on it. I just literally couldn't keep up with all the other games that were coming. But for sure, I do want to finish it off and get back in and see if I can do some more guides and tutorials on the brand new DLC. Hood Outlaws and Legends arrives on May the 10th. It's going to be available for Xbox, PlayStation and PC and it's looking likely to combine a lot of PvP and PvE action in multiplayer heists. You'll be going up against other players in other teams as you try and take gold and valuables in from a keep protected by NPC enemies. All set in the fantasy world of Hood Outlaws and Legends. They're mixing up the ye old legend with their own take on stuff, adding a little bit of magic with some some great locations. I had a chance to check this out in the technical beta and while I can't say much I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what the full release will be like. It's going to be $29.99 on Xbox and PlayStation however if you order a year one edition you'll gain access with three days early. Again another practice I'm not super pleased with but I guess it's kind of common nowadays. The year one season pass will give you a bunch of different battle passes so it looks like you're going to be able to earn unlocks as you carry on playing the game and pretty much take out the opposition and try and get that loot off the map. Pretty much imagine the Assassin's Creed multiplayer modes mixed in with a little bit of For Honor and then chuck in a little bit of Escape from Tarkov and you kind of get the idea of what Hood Outlaws and Legends is going to be. This is a multiplayer game mode, in fact you have to have an online connection so don't look likely to buy this if you're looking for some sort of story or single player experience. So May the 10th for Xbox and PlayStation and PC of course on, where well, it does look like they're actually charging the same price instead of making it cheaper. So they got one portion of their pre-orders right. So May is really super busy and not just if you're a survival fan, there's a bunch of other games that I'm really interested in, including of course one of the greatest game series of all time, Mass Effect. The Legendary Edition launches on the 14th of May and I am a big N7 nerd. Will I be covering this game massively? I'm not sure. Honestly, I would love to give it a shot and I want to see how far it's actually progressed, how different it does look and how it plays. I absolutely love the originals, not so much Andromeda, and I'm definitely keen to dip back in and see what it's all about. So yeah, maybe you'll see some guides, but most likely me just doing a few live streams and enjoying my forays back into being Commander Shepard. The Legendary Edition is going to come with 40 pieces of unique DLC, skins and story content from all three of the previous original trilogy. However, there is some things missing. It is missing the very first DLC that had a Horde style mode in the first game. Apparently they lost the files. And surprisingly to me, lots of you guys were really upset that the multiplayer won't be making a return from Mass Effect 3. It seemed like you guys really enjoyed that aspect of it. I thought it was okay and cool, but it was never the focus for me in playing these games. It was always about the single player, the story, the choices and the consequences. Either way, I'm super excited about this. So yeah, can't wait to dive in. I honestly don't know how I'm going to cope with all these games in May, but another firm favourite is Subnautica, one of the best survival games you'll ever play. It is a single player experience, it's been around for years and it's finally coming to Nintendo Switch. But that's not all. Below Zero, the pseudo sequel to the first original game, is also finally making its appearance on all consoles and coming out with early access as 1.0. So we'll cover the details of that in a second, but let's talk about the original game and what it could be like on Switch. The developers recently did a live stream showcasing how it looks. As I'm very sceptical of survival games on Switch, I've been burnt in the past by games like Ark and Green Hell. It has to be said as well that performance on Xbox and PlayStation still isn't amazing. Subnautica recently was free as part of the PlayStation Play at Home initiative, and I still believe that's going all throughout April. So go and check out the first game for sure. 
It's filled with jump scares as big leviathans scare you in the waters, try and get resources, build bases and explore quite a bit of story. In terms of price, it is bundled together if you want with the Below Zero game, so you can get both games together if you're a real big fan. But so far, I'm only seeing that as a physical copy edition that you can buy for like $60. Otherwise, you'll be able to buy both of these games individually. And of course, Xbox and PlayStation, you are going to be getting Below Zero for the first time too. That's obviously going to be $29.99, the same price as the original, and you won't be able to buy any sort of big collection if you missed out. So hopefully you've downloaded the free PS4 version and you're looking forward to the sequel, as I have been doing lots of Let's Plays on it, you should go and check them out. The sequel has you returning to the same planet, but a different hemisphere where there's lots of snow, ice, and a completely brand new story. In fact, they went double on the story, lots of cutscenes, lots of NPCs, a whole host of new gadgets and enemies to swim away from. It's been in early access nearly two years, originally it was meant to be just a DLC, then they expanded it as just a little standalone game, and now it's kind of more or less a full-blown sequel, although you don't have to have played the first game to understand what's going on in the second, it'll just give you a little bit more, little tidbit easter egg style kind of stuff. Some other big differences, while you can still build bases, they now have the sea truck, which is a huge elongated kind of underwater submarine train, which you can upgrade and add stuff to, and pretty much take that with you as you explore the new chilly biomes. It's a real shame they never took a lot of the feedback from the first one, which was to add some sort of co-op or multiplayer. Both of these games are single player experiences. Both versions will be launching on all platforms on May the 14th and for PC players you're going to get the chance to finally complete the story with the final pieces of the game being added on that day for you guys too. The original Subnautica, card despite its performance problems on console has been in my top 3 survival games the last 3 years so I definitely recommend it even with some of the issues it's got, it's still a fantastic game and developers have updated and tried increasing the performance. Let's hope that something goes along them lines with the Switch also helping with performance as often the optimization does get sent back to other platforms. I'm going to do my best to get early review code so I've got a proper full blown review and expect lots of guides and tutorials from me as soon as this game is available for everyone. So I'm normally not a big fan of hunting games, I don't really like enjoying them, playing them, not my bag. I realise they could have good connections though to survival, so maybe Open Country could be the game that bridges the gap for you. This is made by the Fun Labs, these are the guys that ported a bunch of games, especially survival games like Stranded Deep and On Terms, to console in the last couple of years. So this is their first own project in a while, it's published by 505 Games and it's going to be coming out on May the 18th on PC. It is a single player or co-op game that you can play. No price listed as yet, but it does look likely it's going to be a full game rather than early access. And to me, it's a little bit like a State of Decay game without the zombies and obviously a lot more hunting. It's time to get your chad on. Rust is finally appearing on the console. It's coming to Xbox and PlayStation on the 21st of May. It's going to be crossplay between the platforms, but never crossplay between PC. That's because the console edition is very different. Recent blogs by the developers have stated that the game has a starting point very different from PC, so don't expect to see the same sort of content that you've seen in PC over the last year or so. It could be very, very different. Going forwards, they're going to update the game in a different way as well, taking some of the best features from PC by the looks of it and maybe iterating and adding more what the console community need or want. I was super, super excited about Rust Comes Console. I've been saying it's going to be the art killer, it's going to decimate the DayZ player base. Absolutely on console, you're going to go mad for this game. But the latest news has taken the wind out of my sails a little bit. I'm not a big fan of AAA pricing and the shenanigans in locking off certain content behind big paywalls. But of course, I will be covering it still to give you guys my opinion. Key differences also you should note from PC, of course, they're not talking anything about add-ons yet. Rentable servers will only be done through actual double level themselves, you won't be able to use any outside companies and it does look like the limit is going to be 100 players for a considerable amount of time, no 200 or 300 player servers. You will be able to use backwards compatibility to play it on your PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X and S, but there is no keyboard and mouse support as it would give too much of an advantage to console players using that kind of things. 
The game's currently still in closed beta testing, a technical test, and looks like that's been extended quite a bit. And again, controversially, they're only giving access to the next stage of the beta, to people that bought the most expensive editions of the game rather than the base version, which in my eyes is pretty scummy. There's no word exactly when that's going to start other than at some point in April, but I would expect it towards the middle or end of April. It's also been confirmed there's going to be skins so you can check out lots of new items every week if you want to make yourself look bling and good. And that is what you need to know about Rust coming to console. So another game not strictly survival but it's got so many great elements like being able to craft your own weapons, explore a huge open world with some great combat based a similar style to Devil May Cry. I am talking of course about Biomutant. This game I have been hyped for for years and it's probably the most exciting release for me in May. Yes it's beating games like Rust, Subnautica and even Arc Gen 2 DLC. Made by one of the original developers of the Just Cause series, Biomutant promises to deliver a full open world experience, taking on all sorts of smaller enemies and large as you craft your own weapons, unlock new abilities, as you not only be a Kung Fu Panda, you can be a Kung Fu Cat, a Kung Fu... well, I don't know what other creatures there actually are in there. They've got a full customizable option, effectively meaning that when you change your character if you make him big and quite large he's going to be super skilled and strong if you make him quite lean he'll be quite agile these are the kinds of things that i'm super excited about it's got so much combat in it so many different types of enemies big huge monster style massive creatures that you're going to have to take on using specialized equipment that you'll unlock there's factions in the game that you're going to have to be careful of this game is looking fantastic and I can't wait to dive in. It's Xbox, PlayStation and of course PC. It is a full blown AAA price point so expect it to be around $60. And I've even gone and ordered a special collector's edition. I'm that hyped about this game. The developers have been really hard on this. They were originally planned to release it early last year and then obviously they had a decision to make about whether or not it was matching their quality. They've spent the last year doing plenty of bug fixing adding and increasing the scope of the game as well so it really is going to be a massive experience and yeah i'm totally down for this some other key features you need to note there are mutations in the game if you get exposed to too many items or things they'll give you bonuses and buffs but these are physical not just some arbitrary stats tacked on your skin may become oily and luminescent if you're hanging around too much toxic waste in certain areas and the biomes themselves are challenging. You will be able to free roam and do what you want but some biomes will be too dangerous to venture into at length unless you've got the right equipment. The game is also promising consequences as you go through and help different factions out this may contribute to a different ending particularly as the structure is around saving a tree of life you can choose whether or not to do this or just leave it be here is a little bit of crafting as it's showing it's meant to be pretty free you can make all sorts of crazy melee weapons and all sorts of guns and to help go along with the crafting and all the abilities, you do have these special equipment items that you'll need to progress and traverse the world too. A single player only experience though, but one I'm seriously going to put some time into. Absolutely, definitely top of the leaderboard in terms of games I'm excited for in May. All platforms, as I said, May the 25th. Coming up to its sixth birthday, it's the final end for Ark Survival Evolved 1 with its last ever DLC, Gen Part 2. The second part of the Genesis Season Pass, it is the conclusion to Ark Survival Evolved as we know it before the sequel Full Blown comes out in 2022. It's going to be available for Xbox, PlayStation and PC barring any more delays as it's already been delayed twice. It's been a long time since I played, or to be honest, even cared about Art Survival World, but I am keen to see what the final conclusion to this is. Offering obviously a brand new map or exploration zone. In this instance, it's going to be a kind of a space arc as it flies through the universe to a final destination, which I'm going to guess is the setting for Arc 2. Loads of brand new creatures taking inspiration from Horizon Zero Dawn and a little bit Halo, and it does look like to be the usual kind of stuff you expect. Lots of taming, lots of creatures to shotgun in the face as you try and work your way up to tech gear and do lots of new cool things. Missions will be returning as they were in the first DLC, but this time they won't be taking place on the map. The developers have taken on feedback and said you'll be teleported to a new instance 
to take part in some of the core missions, which were a nice feature from Gen 1, if just a little bit scrappy. We can only pray that for once and for all, a DLC arrives without a hitch. There has not been a time that something hasn't broke, been majorly bad, or simply just not been good enough for console release, taking months and months to fix, and one of the main reasons why I stopped covering the game so much. But I can't be too miserable about the ending of a game that gave me a good start with YouTube, in fact really set me on the road. And so yeah, it's a big part of my life arc, even if I do hate it at times, I want to check out where we're going with the final DLC. It's going to be part of that season pass, you can't buy it separately, so you do have to buy the whole season pass, and it's about $34.99 or $40. They revealed a bunch of new stuff a little while ago, including some new creatures and of course new items. I'm very much looking forward to see how it all pans out. So yeah, coming out on May the 26th, fingers crossed, no more delays and we will get a chance to take part in the conclusion of ARK. And finishing off what to expect with survival next few months, Green Hell has got a tentative release date of June for Xbox and PlayStation. This will be the port that a lot of people are excited for. I would say Green Hell is in my top 15 survival games, maybe even top 10. It's a really good one, it's hard, it's a bit more simulation like, but there's loads of good story in it too, and you can now play it multiplayer with your friends. It is a survival experience, a bit like the forest fighting off Aboriginal people as you go and look for your missing wife. That's the story anyway. It came out of early access on PC last year and it's been doing good adding more and more content. The most recent batch of updates adding a new playable area for free, a new NPC race of Aboriginal people to help and do quests for and some extra challenges. It's a really good stuff. It came out on the Switch most recently this year and I have to say I was really unimpressed. I felt like the Switch version was just a bit of a mess and it hasn't received any updates since that launch correcting any bugs or issues. Now the developers actually have stated that that was made by a publisher and a different team altogether and the Xbox and PlayStation versions are fully developed and ported over by themselves. I still say it's a bit of a crap situation, particularly when the Switch version does need some tender love and care, but there seems to be no real word on whether or not it's going to get any significant little updates or whether or not it will receive the free content that is going to be coming for PC as well. A great game on PC, I'm praying the port job for console, Xbox and PlayStation is good and it's just not like the Switch version. You can expect this game to be around $30 to $40 when it launches. And as we get closer next month, I'll hopefully be able to give you a definitive date of when it does release in June. Now a few exceptions to talk about, Conan Exiles Isla Scepter DLC, it is meant to be going live very soon on Xbox and Playstation. Now there's no definitive date and I left it to the end because of that reason. Funcom are making sure though that consoles are receiving a parity patch, so Xbox and Playstation are finally going to see about 6-7 months worth of updates from PC all hit at the same time in the next few weeks, although it has already been delayed twice. Apparently the game plan is that once that update hits and it's stable, they'll then look to release the Isle of Sipta which had some massive revamps in the last 7 months, hopefully on the console platforms too. I am probably not as excited as I was for this. I feel like the DLC was kind of really too bare bones even to put out as early access and I don't like the way that Funcom have pretty much abandoned the console platforms in the last year. So that said, if it does appear in the next few weeks, if it's somehow a miracle it launches in April, I'll definitely cover it. If it appears in May, I may not, as just May is way too stacked for me. So I'm really hoping this doesn't release until June, and that will give me some time to actually dive back into it and see how much improvements have been made or not. And also stay on the lookout for another kind of video like this where I take a look at the progress of all the survival games that are in early access, how many updates they've been receiving, what the likelihood of them is coming to console in the future, and generally just giving you a heads up on the health of some of the games of the future that may be coming to consoles as well. I've always got you console fam, no matter what. Okay, so there we go. I'm the for long enough. I'll see you rat bags for the next video very soon. Don't forget to like, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you lot later.